Our name is Car Racing. We're a group of 70 students from the Casco Institute of Technology. Year by year, we independently develop, manufacture, and test two unique race cars, a combustion and an electric, with which we compete in the international competition of Formula Student. Our electric car has four independent electric motors, one for each wheel. This way, we're able to control the wheel torques at any moment. To do so, we use Simulink. What is torque vectoring? It's a technology to increase the curve speed by distributing different torques on each wheel. While driving through a curve, the car has a load transfer. Here you can see the normal forces as green arrows. They become stronger on the outer wheels and weaker on the inner ones. This is a huge effect on the tire's behavior. The potential for lateral forces is therefore larger at the outer wheels and at the rear axle because the car is heavier at its tail. Let us now look at the longitudinal forces on a car with the solid rear axle. The forces on both wheels are equal. The lateral forces are at full potential at the front axle, but not at the rear axle. The car is under steering. Through torque vectoring, it is possible to distribute more torque to the outer wheels. This leads to a lower needed lateral force on the front axle. Now, by increasing speed, each wheel is at its maximum force, which leads to a higher lateral acceleration and shorter lap times. Our torque vectoring system runs on the main control unit of our car, whose software is written in C code. The problem is that a computer scientist is good at programming, but has no idea of vehicle dynamics, while a mechanical engineer is the opposite. To combine the knowledge, we use a Simulink model for the torque vectoring, developed by the engineer and exported as a C code. Then, the computer scientist must only provide the input variables for the model and send the output variables to the power electronics. Let's see how we implement Simulink. This is an overview of the control model of a Formula Student race car. As you can see, there are many input variables, like the sensor data or other constant parameters. These are the output variables the torques and rotational speeds of the motors. This right here is the key of the entire system, the torque vectoring. In case of sensor failure, we have safety functions, seen here. We'll focus on this subsystem to take a closer look. Inside each box is a MATLAB function, which is able to give an output for any given input. This code, for example, calculates the load ratio between the left and the right track of the vehicle. The system you can see at the right defines the distribution of torques in case of sensor and other failures and provides the best alternative for the original torque vectoring system. There is another advantage of using Simulink. The control model can easily be validated by using car simulation software, like in our case IPG CarMaker. The simulation software closes the open loop of the Simulink control model. The result is a software in the loop system, which is very important for debugging the Simulink model. Nearly every parameter of the car can be monitored and analyzed to improve the control model. Here you can see an output of the simulation. The yaw rate, which is desired from the driver, is the blue line. The green line shows the yaw rate of the car without the Simulink regulation model. The orange line is the one with the regulation. As you can see, it has a higher initial slope and decreases with a constant rate. This means that the car turns faster in the beginning of the curve and then avoids oscillations. Through the Simulink program model and the amazing performance of our team, we were able to be very successful in the season 2016 and are currently top one Formula student team with the electric race car.